Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, my name is Martin Collin. I'm first vice president and I will be the moderator of today. And it is my great pleasure today to moderate this event with such a distinguished uh, speaker about such an important topic. The Middle East uh, issue, the Palestinian refu refugee issue, and of course the role of Japan in uh, these countries that is often overlooked. I will keep my introduction very short uh, because our guest is widely known, especially to you. It is, it is Mr. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Sadako Ogata, President of the Japan International Cooperation Agency. In case some of you don't know her past, um, she is one of the most globally known diplomats of Japan. Before she has served as uh, before she has served as UN High Commissioner of Refugees and as Japan's ambassador to the United Nations and also as co-chair for the International Conference on Reconstruction Assistance for Afghanistan in 2002. Please uh, give our guests a very warm welcome. <coughs> and Mr. Junichi Yamada, he is Director General of the Middle East and Europe Department of the JICA. Mm -hmm. So, and now I would have another suggestion to you. Please turn off your cell phones or put it to silent mode, out of courtesy to our guests. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kerlin. Uh, I have to say thank you for being here today, because originally, this, today's uh, press conference was to be done by Filippo Grandi, who is the Commissioner General of UNRWA. And he has had, his uh, mother passed away, and he had to stay at home and not being able to visit Japan this week. But um, I, once before, I, I was able to be here with Filippo when he was the, uh, uh, he was, he, we were both working at UNHCR together, and he was representing UNHCR in Afghanistan, and I was a Prime Minister Koizumi special representative for uh, Afghan reconstruction and so on. So we did this event together, and I said, this time again, Philip, if you're coming, I'll be happy to say good things about you. But since he's not here, and I hope he'll be here in about a month's time, I did want to say a few words about what JICA has been doing for the Palestinians, but also in the Middle East. And right now, I think this uh, Arab Spring is something that is not so much talked about in Japan, but it is a very, very important global development that uh, JICA and my office and uh, many others are fully involved. And I thought maybe, you know, I would touch on Palestinians and what we do in Palestine and so on, but I thought I would uh, just decide to share some of my thoughts and information with you, and I'm very grateful that you're all here today. This, uh, this, in a way, in Japan, you probably think that there are two big events going on in, in the world, and this is a historical event, of course, the uh, Arab Spring, so-called, but also the earthquake in Japan, which uh, took place March 11th. I think it was a shock, a source of grief, worry for all of us, but I think uh, uh, these two, what, this, the tsunami and earthquake may have been better foreseen, and there, there should have been. But the Arab Spring too, there were many things that were already signs there that this, this development could take place. And I would just like to say that Japan has been able to, and Jack and especially has been able to do a lot in Tunisia, Egypt, and the, the, the parts of where the Middle East is moving a great deal, and I'd like to say a few words about that first. Um, I visited Tunisia and Egypt several times over the past few years, but just two years ago when I visited um, Tunisia, I realized that there was a lot of economic growth and development in Tunis. There was a lot of education spreading, and when I met, uh, I was received by President Ben Ali, he requested that you, Japan has done a lot in bringing education level higher, especially science and technology education. Science and technology education is something that the world, especially the developing world, expects a lot from Japan. 
and we've had China has been at the forefront of trying to do this kind of education in the parts of the world that we are wanted. And when I went there, I realized that the city has improved a great deal and uh, the economic conditions were improving. But at the same time, education was spreading science and technology, but there were not enough jobs. And I remember that how difficult it is to push economic growth at the same time and, and then give education, but to get job opportunities to cover enough people who are aspiring to do something with their education. And actually, the unemployment rate of university graduates is about 30%. That's a danger sign that I think we should have all recognized better. And also, the freedom of information, uh, freedom, press freedom, ranked in Tunisia, ranked 186 among 196 countries. These were signs that we should have noted much better. And it shows that benefits of growth are not reaching the right kind of people, the majority of youth, and they were not exactly able to voice their, their frustration. This is the kind of thing that are now, I think, at the bottom of the problems that we're seeing in many parts of the world. In Egypt, too. Egypt is a country that Japan has been assisting a great deal, I would say past, present, and the future, because the path of the big Egyptian uh, museum has been done a great deal by Japan, and JICA has been doing that. Uh, Education-wise, too. And just last year, uh, in June, I went to Alexander, where Egypt and Japan, the University of Science and Technology, was just opened. This was something that the Egyptian government wanted very, very much. And at the end, Japan and JICA was able to make a consortium of 12 universities in Japan to be able to set up a graduate school of science and technology. And it is something that the Egyptians wanted, we wanted too. And this was just launched last year. In this, in Egypt too, there are certain problems of unemployment uh, in terms of freedom. Of, the unemployment rate was 23%, and freedom of the press ranked 130 in a range of uh, 196 countries. So there the problems were there, although Egypt is a great country with lots of very well-educated people. But at the same time, the difficulty of educating the youth in science and technology, technology and meeting the industrial needs is a very difficult um, attempt to do. And this is big lessons that I think uh, we are, we at Jaka is experiencing very much. Uh, in, in addition to this science and technology aspect, uh, um, assistance to Egypt is a very, very big one. Just last year, the technical assistance, uh, 2.46 billion Japanese, this is, uh, uh, Japanese yen, and uh, grant aid to 2.27 billion, ODA loans, 38.8 billion. It is one of the largest recipients of Japanese technical educate technical, grant aid, technical assistance, and, and loans. And these uh, two countries, which started the whole Arab uh, Spring sort of movement, shows that it is difficult to advocate for something that we should have done before. This is inclusiveness in development assistance. Advocating for poverty reduction or debt relief. And this is something that I think in all our policies and programs, that we have to keep in mind. We help development, we help economic growth, but at the same time, we have to make sure that our programs add to inclusiveness and not just open up a chasm of, also of problems that have to be solved gradually. Not only gradually, but quickly as the economic grows. And I think this is something that uh, uh, JICA has as a technical assistance and grant aid organization, we have to really make sure that all our development assistance, whether in whatever country, we have to be sure that development is very important, but how the people 
are brought into this development process is something even more, more important <coughs> to think through. And so we are trying right now to make sure that our development assistance in whatever place that we're doing will keep this balance between uh, development and inclusiveness in the beneficiary. And especially in higher education has to be kept very much uh, into in mind. Um, I think uh, uh, as far as uh, the other countries, Libya, we're not very much there because it was just to the last uh, 10 years, I imagine, that the um, diplomatic relations in Lib to Libya was set up. So there we're not doing too much. Uh, right now, we're not doing too much, and so we are not uh, having to cope with the results of the development. But Syria, yes, uh, a lot of people, refugees have started moving out of Syria, and I think uh, uh, also to Turkey too. The whole region is very much under a very, very tense situation. As far as the Palestine refugees is concerned, I think Trivo can tell you more about it. Uh, there are lots of Palestinian refugees which were in Syria too, and about uh, many are living in Jordan, Lebanon, West Bank, and Gaza. Um, at the present, the countries, neighboring countries, are generously supporting them, and at, as yet, many refugees are staying in these countries. But we are also trying to see what we can do to support the displaced persons who. Um, at least building some local schools, schools and so on. Especially state building is a very important thing to do in these uh, Arab countries. And also uh, what we have to, we are to do is something their requests and expectations are now coming to our country. And especially with Egypt, I said that, I just said where we were there in Egypt. But Already, Egypt has requested several assistance from, from Japan, which is very, very, shall I say, future-oriented. Uh, first of all, Egypt has already requested an election support to Japan for the election of the People's Assembly in September. And JICA has sent Japanese election experts to the Higher Election Committee of Egypt. And already start, they have started working and we started a series of lectures and also planning how to do the uh, election which is coming up uh, very soon. It's, it's October, is it? September. September. September already. Also, um, in t to Tunisia too, we have sent an election system specialist to able to help them prepare for the election of National Constituent Assembly, which will be in next October. Now, uh, another important thing is to draw a new development, uh, economic and social <coughs> development plan for Egypt. And JICA has already started helping dra to draft the new five-year plan, 2012 to 2016, because the Ministry of Planning of Egypt <coughs> is starting to make these plans and have asked the Japanese experts to come over and we have already responded to their request. So in this very, very important aspect of uh, uh, national planning, we have sent now several experts and also for the election, an election uh, arrangement expert already. So uh, in this sense, I think we, it is very, and I am a, I think I'm correct in saying that Egypt is the, uh, Japan is the only country to which Egypt made this respect for planning, for, for future planning in terms of organization structure, election process, and so on. So we are taking those requests very, very seriously. I think also I would like to add that there's some things where the uh, Middle East peace talk is being affected by these changes. Uh, as you know, Egypt has uh, opened up the Rafah Gate, which is the gate between Gaza and the other part of Palestine. And this is something that we hope very much that uh, Japan will be able to help this kind of movement, which is just beginning to surface. 
Syria is also a very important country where I'm told that it's the most authentic Arabic, Arab languages in Syria. And there are many Japanese students who are stayed on. But Syria also faced, is facing political and social uprising. And I think Palestine is also uh, now uh, trying to figure out how to, do, to set up the reconciliation process between the Fatah and the Hamas. So with these, all the changes starting, what the Japanese government is trying to do is to help the process of more orderly, organized country development in this part of the world. Um, I think uh, referring more directly to Palestine, something that uh, JAGA has been doing already for several years is to start the agro-industrial park in Jericho, which is in the West Bank side, so that eventually there will be much more uh, export possibilities of, of agricultural goods from that uh, part. I don't think we have yet gained any agricultural products yet, but the, or, but the preparations are moving up, moving on. And also the Palestine, Palestinian local government, we are um, training their capacity to govern, to manage. Um, I think I'll just refer one thing to Aleppo, because this is a place that I went myself two years ago. Uh, this is in northern Syria, where there is a rather large group of uh, Palestine refugees from the 1948 period who are living there. And Syria was not able to give them, give, give. Syria gave them a place to stay, but there's, their housing was really being uh, deteriorating a lot. And there was uh, also Americans and I think the Canadians have also come in to help. But we were asked if we could help build, rebuild their houses in Aleppo, which is in the northern, second largest city in Syria. And that we have started too, which gives the, uh, I think what we, uh, the point that uh, in principle is that the right of return should be kept at the same time. If the Palestinian refugees could get a better living condition and, and better living circumstances, that should also be helped. One advantage that I saw was that Syria, if these uh, refugees uh, can, uh, who, live, who grew up in the Aleppo camps and so on, could pass the examination, they could all go to university in Syria. So they had, Syria did have these rather generous approaches to some of the refugees. And so we will continue on with the um, assistance to Palestinian refugees also assistance to the Palestinian Authority, technical assistance, grant aid, and with the, JICA is doing all these projects in Palestine, Palestine for the industrial park building. Now, and also uh, improving the uh, Palestine refugee camp in Aleppo, as I mentioned, but also this is the Japanese government who is uh, giving some assistance to Lebanon to improve some of the Palestinian refugee camps there. And I've just uh, rappled up all the things that we're doing, but uh, um, I'll just on behalf of Philippe uh, Gandhi from UNRWA, I would say that Palestinian refugees is something that has an enormous political and demographic, demographic impact in the region. And JICA's role is to help the Palestinian refugees in the whole uh, region for their living, for their education, and for their, for their opportunities, better opportunities. So in this sense, we have a very close collaboration with UNRWA. And I, I, and I thought today I would just say a few words about what we're doing with UNRWA, as well as with many of their countries as they're going through enormous changes, some call um, of, 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 well, revolutionary developments there. I just wanted to say these uh, just trends and overview and, and for your uh, questions. And I have uh, Mr. Hamada here, who is uh, in charge of the whole Middle East, to respond to difficult questions.
after we have learned a little bit about the request of uh, Arab countries to the Japanese government, um, I would like to open the floor as uh, it is custom in our club. working press first. Please um, introduce yourself, in, in, yourself by name and affiliation and keep uh, yourself to one question at first. So, any questions, please? Yes. <clears throat> Anthony Rowley from Singapore Business Times Development Matter. I came in rather late, I'm afraid, for which I apologise. Um, I think you said that JICA 